So can you tell us quickly what exactly is the attorney review period in Illinois? So what is it? Why is it important? So attorney review is an opportunity for you to hire an attorney, have them review the contract, and then make changes to the contract based on their legal knowledge or expertise. So in our standard multi-board contract that we use, it's five business days. So it's five business days from the date the seller signed the contract. So if they sign it on a Tuesday, that five business days will expire that next following Tuesday. So you have five days from the date the seller signs the contract to have an attorney on either side, the buyer or the seller side, review the contract and then make any changes that they want to make to the contract. And it would be common, I, I think, for an, an attorney to be on both sides of the transaction. Both buyers would want to do this and sellers would want to do this. Yeah. And this again is to protect your own interests moving into the transaction and what's typically a very large purchase. Yeah. So this window uh, during this period, this five business days that the attorney review is open, we're also doing a home inspection. Mm -hmm. So let's pretend during that home inspection, the inspector finds an issue with the house and us as buyers would like to attempt to get that remedied yeah. by the seller. This is something the attorney would then take over on? Yeah, absolutely. So I will send out, when I represent a buyer, I will send out contract modifications. I have about seven or eight standard contract modifications that I make for every single one of my buyers that I think make the contract a lot more buyer friendly. So there are some provisions in the contract that provide for really harsh penalties if buyers miss certain dates. Um, there's no appraisal contingency in the standard contract. So I always add language in for an appraisal uh, contingency, meaning if the property doesn't appraise out, you can terminate and get your earnest money back. So things like that. I, so those are typically the first part of the letter. The second part of the letter is where I include any of those requests that a buyer wants to make. So we will say we found you know, electrical issues. We want to have a licensed electrician come review, evaluate, and repair as needed. And then we'll always request copies of the receipts for that at least three business days before closing so that the buyers have an opportunity to take a look at it, contact the electrician if they have any questions. I'm going to build on that one and sidebar for a second, because okay. you said something that was interesting there. Uh, when an attorney is involved in negotiations, they'll always say um, licensed, yeah. right? like, <laughs> which sounds kind of funny, right? As we yeah. go into this story, I can, I'm sure most people will be chuckling because we're going to say, well, was it a licensed plumber? Was it a licensed electrician, mm -hmm. a licensed yeah. roofer? And the yeah. question is, well, why is that? Because I could fix it myself. Yeah, but we don't really know if you know what you're doing. Exactly. So the at-home seller who decides he's going to fix something, it could be making things worse. Yeah. And it is really a great protection. And I think, at least from my understanding of it, one of the things that's sometimes missed is if a buyer asks a seller to have a licensed contractor fix something, that's really ultimately helping fix the seller as well. They yeah. may pay a couple of dollars more than having done it free or you know no late cost of labor when they do it themselves. But if they're doing a bad job, it could still jeopardize the deal. It could leave them open for legal issues in the down the road. Yeah, absolutely. And it actually happens all the time where, so home inspectors, I love home inspectors. They're great. They're extremely important to our transactions, but they're not contractors. So a lot of times we'll have a inspector go through the property and say, this electrical box is dangerous because of X, Y, Z. And, but they're not licensed electricians. When you have a licensed electrician come in, sometimes they come in and say, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this electrical box and they will write something up. So if you're a seller and you have, you pay the electrician to come out, they take a look at it and they say, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. We can go back to the buyers and say, you know, we had somebody come out and take a look at it. There's nothing to fix. And here's a copy of his, you know, receipt invoice report saying that, you know, this is a perfectly acceptable electrical box. Absolutely. There, there is oftentimes, there's a lot of participants in Illinois real estate. And I know 100% on the buyer side, there's often, aside from your little team helping you do it, there's friends and family kind of chirping in your ear things. And there can be a lot of just old folksy information that goes around that's just not true and is also bad practice. Yeah, for sure. Um, what else should we know about the attorney review period on the contract? 
So it's the the biggest thing to know about it is it's the time frame that either party can back out. So there is only one reason why you cannot terminate a contract and attorney review, and that's purchase price. So I cannot terminate on the basis of purchase price. I can terminate for any other reason. So I do sometimes have buyers that say, I went under contract, you know, I got really excited about the house, but now I found something else that I want to buy instead. We can cancel for that reason. I don't have to even give them a reason. You can literally just change your mind the following day and I can terminate under attorney review, which does happen sometimes, you know, or people will put in offers on multiple properties at the same time and they'll get under contract on both of them without the intention of buying two properties. We can cancel the other one in that first five days without any penalty. And just as a takeaway reminder for everybody listening, the attorney review, the five business day window that we have starts the day after the seller signs the contract. Mm -hmm. Weekend days do not count. So in essence, a lot of times you really end up with like a week and a half to do your homework because of weekends and such. But, um, that is day one is the day after seller signs it, so forth, unless, yeah. ex unless extended by you, the attorney. Yeah. So, and that's actually happening a lot, especially when the market's busy in the summer months, inspectors get booked up really fast. And so a lot of times I have buyers that can't get an inspection done in that first five days. So the five days is actually a really tight timeline when you think about it, because that five business days is not only the time frame for you to have the inspection done, but you have to then get a copy of the report, review the report, email me the list of items that you want to ask the seller to address. I have to type that up, turn it into a formal letter, send it back mm -hmm. to you, get you to to approve it and then send it to the seller's attorney. So all those things have to happen in those first five business days, which is why extensions are pretty common. It's a really short time frame, um, especially like I said, when we're in the summer months and it's really hard to get an inspector to set something up or you know, if we have clients that are working and are like, I can only do the inspection on the weekends or things like that, we oftentimes do, I would say at least half of my contracts, we end up extending that five business day time frame to give our clients enough time to review the report and get back to me. And that's a great point because if I'm if I'm the buyer and we get the contract, then all of a sudden we can't do our home inspection until day four and a half. I should not feel panicked about that. Right. I should yeah. trust that the the attorneys will work uh, play nice together, so to speak, mm -hmm. and keep that open for a few more days, just so everybody can have done their due diligence and reviewed everything. Yeah, I've never i I've probably done two thousand transactions at this point in my career. I've never had somebody not grant an extension unless there was something else going on. So you got a better offer, you know, in that first five days, then they might say, no, we're not going to grant you the extension. But it's extremely uncommon for them not to, so long as there's a justified reason for it, right? If you're just like, well, I'm going on vacation or, you know, I want three weeks to think it, that's probably not going to be okay with the seller because they're going to want to get the inspection negotiation started. But if you say to them, Hey, I wasn't able to get an inspection scheduled until day five, I need an extra three business days to get back to you on this. I, that's very rarely an issue. Sure. Uh, again, just as a reminder, if anybody wants to reach out to her, you go to lamonicolaw.com or you jump on Facebook slash LaMonico Law. Links will be down below. We will talk to Lauren next week. See you then. <laughs> <laughs>